Dr. Kevorkian is compassionate, kind, dedicated, gifted, and above all, honest. He has a sense of humor, and I, uh, I, I'm just happy that I know him. I think Dr. Kevorkian is a serial killer. Jack Kevorkian, commonly known as Dr. Death, fervently believes everyone, especially those who are terminally ill, should have the right to die with dignity in the manner and time they choose. This is not a man obsessed with death. This is a wonderful, warm man who, for some reason, in the press has been portrayed as some kind of uh, um, morbid, uh, obsessed creature. Kevorkian's career in medicine and controversy began here at the University of Michigan, where he graduated from medical school in 1952. Death and dying piqued his interest early on. If you know what death is, you know what life is. As a medical resident, Kevorkian regularly visited terminal patients. He said he liked to look into their eyes as they died. His views about medicine and his dealings with other people were, um, were very different and not accepted by uh, the vast majority of his colleagues. Later, Kevorkian developed an interest in transfusing the blood of cadavers into live patients. People think, oh my gosh, that's, uh, you know, macabre. It's not at all. Kevorkian wrote scholarly articles about cadaver transfusions and presented papers advocating medical experimentation on death row inmates. It would be a unique privilege to be able to experiment on a doomed human being, he wrote. He had... Um some very strange ideas. In his spare time, Kevorkian likes to paint. Though these early paintings were destroyed, the doctor is busy making new ones. He finished the third painting, and those will, right after the trial, will begin the auction process. Please don't tell me what to do with my life or my death. But none of Kevorkian's activities sparked nearly the controversy he caused when he began helping patients, like 30-year-old Thomas Hyde, die. All rise for the jury. In court, controversy will center primarily on the question of Kevorkian's intent at the time he helped Hyde die. Michigan law makes it a crime, punishable by four years in prison, to help someone die. But remember, the law allows doctors to relieve patients' pain and suffering, even when doing so causes death. So to win, Prosecutor Kenny has to show that Kevorkian's intent at the time he assisted with Hyde's suicide was to help Hyde die and not merely to end his suffering. I knew that it was going to be uh, very much of an uphill battle. In his opening statement, defense attorney Jeffrey Feiger threw in an additional issue. However, Thomas Hyde did not die in the county of Wayne or on Belle Isle. His suicide, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, took place in Royal Oak, Michigan at Dr. Kevorkian's home. Did Hyde die behind Kevorkian's apartment in Royal Oak, or did he die on Belle Isle? The question will cause real problems for the prosecution. In every criminal case, the prosecutor has to establish where the alleged crime took place. Defense lawyers rarely make an issue of venue, however. The upshot? Kenny has to prove Hyde died on Belle Isle, not in Royal Oak. Since venue, in other words, where the alleged crime happened is an element of the offense which must be proved beyond a reasonable doubt. I thought it was appropriate that I bring that up, don't you? Feiger may have found a way to get his client off, but by placing venue an issue, he ensures that the case against Kevorkian will focus largely on the seemingly trivial question of where Thomas Hyde died. My name is James D. Arthurs. I'm an inspector with the Detroit Police Department. The state's first witness was working in the police station on Belle Isle, just outside Detroit, on August 4, 1993. He spoke with Kevorkian near the Belle Isle Zoo at about 9.30 that morning. I said, do you have a victim in that vehicle? And he replied that he did. Did Dr. Kevorkian tell you anything else? That uh, he had uh, assisted uh, the suicide. On cross-examination, Feiger raises the possibility Kevorkian turned himself in on Belle Isle after Hyde died somewhere else. You don't know where um, Tom Hyde died, do you? No, I don't. Thanks. 
The state's next witness, Wayne County Coroner Badr Kasim, examined Hyde's body at the morgue. And what was your expert opinion, sir, as to the cause of his death? Thomas Hyde died of carbon monoxide poisoning. And uh, how did you rule the manner of his death, sir? I ruled the manner of death as suicide. Figer uses his cross-examination to reacquaint jurors with the wrenching human drama at the heart of the case. There is in possession of, of the court now and uh, myself a videotape which vividly describes the pain and suffering, the then existing emotional and physical suffering of Thomas Hyde. Against Kenny's objections, Figer offers as evidence a videotape of Kevorkian's first meeting with Thomas Hyde and his wife, Heidi. Can you move your arms like this at all? Yeah, the deltoids. Yeah, that's what I'm Okay, don't strain too much, Doc. Don't strain. Conserve your energy. Yes, so you know yes. you get a Now he's getting cramps, right? Okay. Although Figer says he has to show Kasim the tape in order to question him about Hyde's condition, he knows the tape will strengthen the emotional appeal at the heart of Kevorkian's defense. Every day it's worse. Okay. Just, we're here to help. Don't worry. You're not, you're not alone. You're not alone. Kassim's cross-examination gives Figer another chance to impress jurors with the horror of Hyde's situation. Would I be right in characterizing the, the final processes in terms of that form of death where literally the patient is drowning in his own phlegm? Uh, within the lungs or, or whatever fluid is accumulating in there without any ability to even cough? That's correct. Good afternoon. Would you please tell us your full name? Anita Banks. Kenny's next witness, police officer Anita Banks, was cruising around Belle Isle on the morning of August 4th. During the course of your uh, work that morning, did you ever see um, a Volkswagen van at all on Belle Isle? Yes, I did. Do you happen to recall when that was? It was approximately between 8 a.m. and 8.30 p.m. 8.30 a.m. This is important testimony for the state because it places Kevorkian on Belle Isle early on the morning of August 4th, which suggests the suicide took place on Belle Isle, not behind Kevorkian's apartment in Royal Oak. On cross-examination, Figer seeks to undo the damage. Dr. Kevorkian didn't tell you where the vehicle was parked when uh, Mr. Hyde committed suicide, did he? No, he did not. Thank you. I have no further questions. Thank you. Lonnie Lane, an evidence technician with the Detroit police, gives jurors an opportunity to see some of Kevorkian's death equipment. This is the uh, string and the clamp that came from uh, the left index finger of the deceased. Can I have everybody's attention, please? Dr. Kevorkian will be making a statement. He'll take the prosecution saves its trump card for last. Kenny plays the jurors a videotape of the press conference Kevorkian held the day after Hyde died. I uh, helped uh, Thomas Hyde in his suicide. I drove him to Belle Isle. Then I decided to go ahead, and uh, he then went on and died. Kevorkian's own words supply the state's strongest evidence. I did it, and I did it on Belle Isle. Kevorkian says on tape. What better evidence could Kenny have? Uh, Your Honor, at this time, the people rest. Oh, I'm sorry. Stay tuned for the verdict later in this hour. We now return to this episode of Trial Story. <laughs>